today we will explore Skahoy integration with QSYS and it's incredibly straightforward. QSYS offers plugins through their asset manager and you can download that easily and use it. And these plugins enable seamless connection with our Waveboard, Waveboard Mini, Colorfly and the popular PDC Fly controller. And all of this is powered by our open raw panel API that makes our controls panels highly flexible and ready to interact with the world around them. So in this session, I'll demonstrate how to control both the audio mixer inside of QSYS and a PDC camera. So first thing I wanna show you is how are these panels set up? And now Skyhoy panels, they have a web UI like this one. We are looking at PDC Fly and all you need to do to make it ready for QSYS is to go into the settings panel and enable raw panel mode. It is a toggle down here, it's that easy. And the same is of course true for the waveboard panel. It looks very much the same and it also has a raw panel toggle, that's all. And then the QSYS plugin can connect to it. So if we turn our eyes to QSYS software here, we see we have a configuration that includes a matrix mixer. And uh, those of you who know QSYS, you will definitely know what it is, this is and, and how it works and so on. But this is the new thing. This is the plugin available from the asset manager. And big surprise, I can control it using the waveboard, right? So uh, let's first explore that a little bit. Each of these flying faders are available or um, broken out here. And I can also do it the other way. So there's full duplex between the software and the hardware panel. Let's just uh, try some of these buttons. We are now muting some stuff and uh, also enabling solo. And we can of course do the exact same thing from the software and back to the panel again. You may also notice that we have actually 12 channels here and therefore we have a channel selector that basically pushes us over to channel nine, 10, 11, 12, and you can have up to 16 channels in this way. So this layer button flips between layer one and layer two. Then we have channel select buttons down here. You can use them to set presets because these are presets buttons that will recall settings for all on, guitars only, drums only, and that's something you can change as well inside of the plugin. So many of these design decisions are made by the plugin writers who made this plugin to fit perfectly with the waveboard and the audio mixer and uh, components of QSYS. Later, I will show you how you can also break out certain things as control pins, and that means you can connect it to other things if you want to customize a little bit. All right, so one of the things I could also show you is how this knob up here, the encoder knobs, uh, currently is doing pan operation. So you see the panning is changing, but if I press it, it's basically changing function over to becoming the trim button of this uh, value, okay? So that's how that works. Now, let's say that I wanted to change the label of things. Um, so we have kick, snare, hi-hat. Um, I just know all of this as a drum. So I'll just type in drum. Oh, let me try again, drum, there we go. Okay, and as I leave this field, you'll see that this label in the display updates as well. So you can also customize quite easily in this way. Okay, I want to move forward and show you the PDC control plugin over here. So if we just move over here, then we have basically the PDC controller plugin that's compatible with, um, we see PDC Wiz and PDC Fly down here, and this is a PDC Fly. So in this case, we have uh, also the ability to adapt. And um, But first, let's look at this window that shows the camera over here. And with the joystick, I can of course move the camera a little bit, and I have to be a little bit careful. I have only this little preview window of the software, so it is uh, having a bit of latency and not the best if you want to like really do smooth moves and so on. But we can see something is happening right in there. And we can see all the values of the camera. Now, one of the things we could try right away is to change the tilt speed. And you can see the tilt speed up here is reflected in the UI. And apparently I can also do that on this encoder knob. So maybe there's a chance we can customize this a little bit. And I will see if we can find evidence of that in a moment, including all these imaging parameters. So let's bring up the uh, plugin for the PDC Fly. And as I do so, then we see basically here that we have um, the IP address, the port. Those are the technical details of this one. We, we need IP address and port of the device to connect to it, right? Then you can also choose which camera is your camera number one here. And that is the one that we have already installed. And of course you can add more cameras. So we won't do that in this video, but I'll show you that we can manage how these buttons are being used. So the first button is basically 
our camera number one selection. Now the second button is currently not assigned to anything. We have five buttons that are freely available for us right here. So we could assign it to something exciting. I uh, suggest it could be, let me see, um, uh, we will do uh, AWB mode. So that's automatic, uh, auto white balance mode. So if I uh, bring that up, we see it says manual. Okay, so I wanna go to the imaging tab over here. So the uh, white balance is down here, it's set to manual. So as I'm pressing this button, it's now auto. And we see that in the UI as well. We press again, we have a one push mode and that disables some parameters in the UI, then we're back to manual. So basically this is now flipping through those options. Okay, I could go on like this and add something else. It could be backlight compensation. That seems to be a toggle. We can turn that on, we can turn it off again. And we also see a reflection in the UI of that. Now, what about the encoder knobs on top? Well, if we go to the encoders tab here, then you have control one and control two. So right now it is pan speed, tilt speed, zoom speed, recall speed. So tilt speed is the one that I was adjusting just a moment ago when I were here at the control section. So, and it's still available, but if I press it, then it's flipping over to show us something else, just like the wave board. The, the press on the encoder will toggle it between those two modes that it has. And now it is adjusting brightness. Okay, brightness, I saw that in the imaging tab. So if I go to the brightness setting, you see that I'm now, of course, associated with brightness. But what if I wanted something else? What if it was better to have saturation? So saturation, I would expect to see this value change. It is currently four on the display, that's expected. And now that is what I'm changing. So basically I just customized this knob to do exactly what I want out of it from this uh, little menu here. Okay, so you can also go to this, um, but it's mostly just showing that you are active with the joystick. So as you can see, it is like lighting up if the rotation is uh, left or right, etc. To my knowledge, we can't change anything there, but this is how these plugins, uh, they, they are kind of showing status and then also allowing you to edit something and entirely um, all the details of that is something that I'll leave to you to explore, but you can see how easy it is to do the things that has been made available to you by the designers of this software. I uh, just want to go back to Waveboard because I mostly showed that it reflects the settings that is being programmed in, but you can also customize a little bit here on the Waveboard. And by the way, if you scroll down, the plugin includes instructions and um, some guidance on um, how it basically works. So this is the, the basic manual of the product that you, you can read some instructions there. But I want to double click this guy to bring up this window. And in this window, we also see these banks. So the, the first bank, one to four, are these four faders. Then we have additional four faders here for bank uh, five to eight and nine to 12, etc. So if you know Waveboard Mini, Waveboard Mini is essentially half a Waveboard, still with the side buttons here. So that is four channels. So you can imagine a Waveboard Mini is a different smaller form factor that will just give you more layers to flip through. And um, that has a bank of four faders. So on the Waveboard, those tabs, two tabs here, represent the first layer and the remaining two tabs will represent this layer number two. Okay, and then finally you have the side buttons over here where you can also change uh, labels uh, for whatever else these presets might be. And you can also, again, see a reflection of whether you press the button or not. But let's go to one of these banks because if we scroll down, you can assign which channel from your audio mixer is assigned to this fader right there. All right, so what if I change this to channel number three? I would expect to see this fader now move to the position of channel number three and if I move this, you see channel number three is even following along. And if I move channel number three, it's following along. So maybe you don't need to have the same channel assigned to two faders, but it does illustrate the point, doesn't it? That you can basically take from the channels that you know exists in the standard audio mixer and assign to your waveboard in this way. At the end of this video, I would like to uh, show how we can expose control pins of these. And what we need to do is to basically click the plugin and see its properties over here in the tab. So let me just once again click it and we see the properties here and you see control pins down here for every single of the banks. You can basically open this one up and then you could pick fader and you could enable these control pins. And that means they'll be exposed to the world 
outside the plugin. And you know what that means. That means you have a control block with an exposed control pin you can now assign to something else. Thanks for watching this video. Stay up to date with our latest software and hardware by liking and subscribing to this channel. You can also sign up for our newsletter or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. And if you have any questions, our expert sales and support team is here to help you. So check out the video description below for all the links and resources you need.